Politicians use all types of techniques to avoid answering questions. But in 2002, Donald Rumsfeld really surprised everybody when he used pure philosophy to avoid answering a question about the war in Iraq. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. At first, all of this talk of unknown unknowns seems like pure nonsense. But psychologists agree that it's actually true. And they add a fourth category. Unknown knowns. Things that we pretend we don't know. Now, what does any of this have to do with learning English? You're about to find out. Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian. Now, there are a few things in life that I really love. One of them is teaching people English. And another one is learning interesting new things. So, wouldn't it be incredible if there was an activity where you could learn English and learn something new and interesting and learn how to communicate better? Well, there is. Let me introduce you to the Johari window. In 1955, two psychologists Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingham wanted to better understand their relationship with themselves and with others. So they created this really simple technique. And to do this yourself, all you need is this list of adjectives, a piece of paper, and a friend or a partner. So let me show you how easy it is to discover something new, and to communicate better. This class might just change your life. <laughs> Making a Johari window is really simple. For this first part, all you need is the list of adjectives, and you can find a link to download them in the description box. Sit down and, from the list, write down all of the adjectives that you think describe you. Then when you've finished, go and find a friend or a partner and ask them to write down from the list all of the adjectives that they think describe you. So now you have two lists of adjectives. Next, get your piece of paper and divide it into four squares like this. That's why it's called the Johari window, because it looks a little bit like a window. Now, the fun part. We are going to start transferring the two lists of adjectives into the window. So, in the first box, here, we're going to write the adjectives that are both on your list and on your friend's list. So, maybe you and your friend both agree that you are able. And you also agree that you are energetic. Next, we're going to write adjectives that are only on your friends list and not on your list. So maybe your friends think that you are giving. And also that you are intelligent. In this square, we are going to write adjectives that are on your list, but not on your friend's list. So maybe you think that you are shy. And also you think that you are tense. Finally, in this square, we are going to write all of the adjectives that are on the original adjective list, but are not written by you or your friend. For example, searching and patient. Now we can start to analyze our Johari window. 
This first square is the open square. It contains behavior and motivation that is known to ourself and to other people. This square is the blind square. It shows us things that other people see in us that we don't see in ourselves. This is the hidden square. These are things that we keep to ourselves that we don't want to share with other people. And finally, the unknown square. This is where the really interesting things happen. And this is where we can really learn to improve ourselves and our communication. So why is it important to explore this final box, these unknown unknowns? Because in this box, there could be a natural ability that you didn't know you have or an ability that you don't have the self-confidence or the training to use. It could also contain repressed emotions or fears. And all of these things are barriers to good communication. If you want to be a good communicator, you need to expand the size of that first box, that open box. So how can you do that? Well, Luft and Ingham have five simple suggestions. So the first one is to do new things, to try stuff that you've never done before. The second one is you want to increase the size of your blind and your hidden boxes thereby reducing the things in the unknown box. Untried talents, do you have something that maybe you think you're good at? It's time to start trying it out and expanding your talent pool. The next one is exploring your dreams. Did you always want to be an astronaut or a fireman? or maybe an artist or a poet. Well, today is the day to start. And finally, pay attention to what you like. Are you interested in photography? Start taking pictures. Do you like cooking? Well, start cooking more. Not only are these things a recipe for a happy life, but they're also a recipe for great communication. In their 1955 paper, Luft and Ingham list 11 principles of change, two of which I think are really important for communication. The first one is that a change in any of the squares affects all of the other squares. And the second thing is, the smaller the first square, the poorer your communication. It doesn't take a lot of effort or a big change to really increase the size of that first square and to really improve your communication and how much you know about yourself. Well, I hope you found this class interesting and I really hope that the Johari window showed you something new and interesting about yourself. So now you have to work to increase the size of that open part of the window so that you can communicate better in the future. If you would like to see any more classes about the English language, then don't forget to subscribe. This class is made possible by all of my amazing patrons on Patreon. So if you would like to sponsor free English education, then check out the link below. I'm Christian, this is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class.